So the Senate voted 80 to 15 to impose the original Biden deal on the uh, railroad settlement. That deal, by the way, that was boycotted by four unions with 100,000 members, but now they're going to have to face the same thing, 80 to 15. We welcome uh, Senator Rand Paul from the great state of Kentucky. Uh, Senator Paul, as always, sir, welcome. You voted present, which I think indicates at least some level of irritation and maybe opposition. Am, am I reading that wrong or right? You're exactly right. The vote was 80 to 15 to 1. I had a category all alone for myself, and that was present. And the reason I voted present was a, a, sort of an old fashioned notion that I don't think Congress should be involved with contracts saying, oh, labor's right and labor should right. get this. Or I also don't think Congress should say, oh, management's right and management should get this. Negotiations in a marketplace take place voluntarily. Congress shouldn't be dictating our will. We didn't have a political election to see what your wages are. That's what you determine in the marketplace. So I think the whole thing was wrong, and it was my way against, I guess, voting against the Railway Act of 1926 as well. I think it was a mistake. Let's let labor manage uh, and, and negotiate with, with uh, management in a free and voluntary way. You and I are, in, I mean, on this one, uh, Senator, we're in complete sync. I made the same points yesterday. I mean, it's a hundred year old law, some such. It's been used a couple of times. You know, it goes back to the days in the, when I first grew up in my career in um, the 60s and the 70s, where big labor and big government and big business was sit down. Uh, George Shultz, who was Nixon's labor secretary, wrote against that. Uh, but eventually Nixon used it too. That's not the way to do it. Let the two sides argue it out and let the government stay the hell out of it. And the more Congress gets involved, the more the other sides are going to expect this to happen. Now, we have some sort of mediation board, which would be better than Congress, but it's still, you don't want Congress interfering because, frankly, how many sick days you get, what your wages are, labor should try to get the best they can get. And I'm not here to say, labor, you don't deserve this. The four unions that rejected this, I think, are half of the railway workers. Mm -hmm. do, do, should I, you know, usurp their will and tell them, no, this is what I've decided? Uh, you know, nobody in Congress has time to sit down and look at every bit of the details of this. So I just took the opinion that it's not our business and we shouldn't make the decision. I don't want to strike, but my guess is labor doesn't really want to strike, neither does management, and they would have worked it out when push came to shove. I really agree with that, sir. I just totally, Rand, I totally agree with that. Let me just raise this other issue. I mean, I would, Biden says he's, you know, the greatest uh, union guy, union president in the history of the earth, but th there's no paid sick leave here. I mean, everybody has paid sick leave. Now, they have unpaid sick leave. I think it's three or four days. But you have to give a 30-day notice for when you're going to get sick. I just find that stupid. It has no common sense whatsoever. <laughs> and I would have put in pay, you know, I would give them paid sick leave. Now, you're right. That should have come out of negotiations with the railroads and the labor union. But I just don't understand it. I don't understand any of that. Pay unpaid sick leave in 30 days? How do I know what I'm going to do in 30 days? Well, the bottom line is I'm not sure what the final real answer is. I also know from the management point of view, they run a 24-7 thing. Cargo's got to go. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it is hard to say, well, I'm supposed to run the train today, but it's just not going to run because I don't show up. You have to have backup people, of course. But the bottom line is it really isn't the business of politically elected people to get in the middle of that negotiation. Uh, Senator, just in the last uh, minute, minute and a half, is it, can we stop lame duck spending spree? And I'm very, I'm very uh, saddened. I mean, apparently the Republican leadership in the Senate is going to go for an omnibus bill, bunch of people meeting in a room, nobody knows what's going to be in it, and we're going to wind up spending vastly too much money across the board. Is there any way out of this mess? This is why Republican voters and conservative voters across the country are upset. They're tired of the old establishment up here just making a compromise with Democrats and spending money we don't have. So there is a way we could regain the power of the purse. We need to pass 12 individual appropriation yes. bills. Yes. And on one or two of them, we should lay down the gauntlet and we should fight. So 87,000 IRS agents, we should hold up the Department of Treasury bill and say, we're holding it up, and we're not going to fund those IRS agents. 
let's, let's lay down the gauntlet, let's have it out here. But what happens every time is Republicans want more military industrial complex money, Democrats want more welfare money, and they always get together and they always agree and there's always more money, more debt, and that's why our currency is threatened and that's why our economy is being threatened. I mean, it is a violation of the process. There's no regular order. There's no public hearings. There's no debates about the level of spending or the merits of the programs. There's no workfare in any of these, uh, uh, you know, welfare programs. Senator, you, come, you have to come back on. We need to talk more. I mean, it's, I know it's process, but process is very important here because the public doesn't know what's going on without hearings. I'm sorry I run out of time. Uh, hopefully you'll come back. Uh, it's a terrible Absolutely. story. Senator Rand Paul, Kentucky, the best of the best.